Hey everybody, Janet Jekyll Bates, and I have been teasing this spray session for a while, uh, about a week and a half, not, maybe not too long. We're going to go start to finish on a complete recondition and repaint of this man's M79. Couple little things about the, the lure itself, the M79 or Model 79, they started making that in the 1980s. And while you will see a vintage status on most of the resells and resales, they no longer sell it here in the States. They have not discontinued the model. In fact, they make it for their Quantum and Zebco line in Europe still, currently. So while you might see on eBay or some of the undergrounds that it's a vintage status, it's really not because they haven't completely discontinued the bait. It is no longer sold as new in the States but you can find the lure. But it does get that vintage status and there, it is a pretty cool bait. It'll go to seven to nine feet, hence the name M79. Uh, a, lot, a lot of the, uh, the lure companies were clever in doing that and that's one of the basic reasons that it's named what it is. In the bill itself, it's got a little piece, the, uh, the line tie, that once I take this split ring out, it's gonna come completely out. It'll drop out of the bottom of the bait and we need to be mindful of that when we're clear coating this because you have to clear coat the entire thing so we'll have to carve that back out in order to put this line tie back in the bait uh, looks like it may have been at one time maybe sprayed because it's got purple on top of it and it's, it looks like maybe whoever sprayed it did not tape the bill off so I don't know anything else about the history of this particular lure other than it came from Pickwick Lake. It is a reclaim. I have float tested it. The rattles are still good in it. Looks, uh, it sounds like it's got a, a bunch of BBs in it uh, as far as the weight distribution and the uh, pitch of the rattle. The eyes are out of it. The, the split rings in it still look pretty decent. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is take those split rings off and then I'm going to go through how I would clean and recondition this prior to painting. Now I have done one of these, it's been a long time, um, but I have done a little tutorial on how I clean a bait for repaint. Uh, I don't sandblast, but I, I do have a couple of tools that I can use at my disposal to get that um, extra paint off of this lure. So there's that, and this is just going to drop right out. You can see it's just a little piece right here. And it doesn't look like it's in bad shape. There's absolutely no rust on it, nor are there on the split rings. So as long as when I put a hook on the split rings when we're done with this, as long as the split rings hold their elasticity, I guess would be the right word for this. Um, actually, this has 100% been repainted in this purple color. Uh, because <laughs> and they did it with the split rings on because the split ring right here is purple and that wouldn't happen if that were coming from man's. So this, is, this has been uh, repainted at least once. But it looks like when it was repainted, well, who knows? I, I'm not gonna speculate because I don't know the backstory other than it's a Pickwick reclamation. When I go through, I wanna look the bait over. I'm going to look for stuff like this. I'm going to feel that. I've got. I've only got a glove on one hand, but that's only because we're going to be using some alcohol, and alcohol dries my hands out real bad because I'm, I'm constantly in it. It seems like. But I also keep a little pen knife with me, and if there's anything, any type of paint chip that's noticeable, then I'm just going to or that's maybe halfway up. I'm just gonna sand that down with the edge of the knife blade. Do the same thing. A lot of times the, the old paint on here will trap dirt. This thing has been in the mud or along the, the bottom or stuck. It'll collect sediment. So you just wanna get that off. But it's not too bad. I don't know if this paint I don't know what kind of paint it is because if this were, it could be fingernail polish to be honest with you. Who knows? Uh, a lot of times a tournament angler will keep either dye or paint or sharpies on board with them and if they want to get a different effect then they'll change the look of the bait as best they can while they're in the, in the water still. 
but I'm just going to go over this with the edge of the pen knife. That's pretty much all I'm doing just to get the excess pieces of dirt off of this, off the bill and off the bait itself. I'm going to come back, I'm going to use a, an alcohol and water mixture and we're going to use a toothbrush, this toothbrush you see here. And see this is pretty decent. And I'm going to prime this. We're not going to even make any kind of an attempt to do a translucent or transparent bait. We're just going to... You know what? I want to paint it, um, and I did reach out to Mans because I wasn't certain about the dates on when these baits were made. And, and the reason is because I see vintage status on all of it, and I didn't think that it was vintage. Um, usually I consider vintage uh, 60s and before. 1960s and before. That's, that's what I would call a vintage bait. So if these things were made in the 70s and 80s and they were made at a mass rate, which I'm sure these were and still are, um, then I would just, I would not, if I were reselling it, I wouldn't say vintage. So I'm going to get all the junk off of this that I possibly can just with the edge of this knife. And then I'm going to come back with, and this is just a little emery board, and you can use fine grit sandpaper if you have any. I just happen to have these around. It has been excessively humid the last couple of days, so I'm pretty happy not to be doing any yard work whatsoever today. Yesterday was yard work day, and we had heat indexes of about 116 <laughs> 116 degrees, so that was pretty crazy. So I'm it, back in the shop today. It's a full work day for me. I'm going to try and get a couple of videos done, to be honest. And you'll see this one first, because I've been promising. And then we'll have another video. And the regular shop updates and other stuff that I do. But I've, I've pulled all of the stuff that I can possibly pull with the knife off. It is smooth any kind of prime that goes on here now you're not going to see anything that looks like a chip anything that's going to distinguish layers a lot of times people leave those chips on and you can really see it but you can see we're getting a we're getting a good amount of junk off of here and you want to try and have the bait as clean as possible if you're going to repaint it and I'm just going to come back real quick with the thicker side of the emery board and run this along the back. Just try and get all this junk off and then I'm going to take these cotton balls you see here, dip them. I'm going to use a, a water, distilled water solution and some 91% isopropyl alcohol. And basically with this, and I might take a toothbrush because it looks like there's some dirt trapped in the letters and numbers along each side of the bait. So I'll get that done. And this is probably the most boring part of it, but it has to be done. If you guys have done this and are used to doing this, you're welcome to skip to the spray session part of the video. But I wanted to show you how I did it. I promised you that I would, and I am true to my word, sometimes even to my detriment. Like I said, it's been, gosh, a couple of years since I've done another one. So with this, I'm just going to grab a little alcohol and a little bit of distilled water. Don't need to fill the cup. I'm going to take my toothbrush and obviously get an old used toothbrush that you're not using anymore. Probably not a good idea. If you don't. And with the alcohol in here, you can really see a transformation. This bait's starting to clean up real good. I can smell the alcohol. I'm surprised that you wouldn't be able to smell it through the lens because it's strong. Isopropyl is a really good cleaning agent. It will dry your bait out, so I'm going to go ahead and run this under a faucet 
before I do anything else, but you can really just see the dirt coming off of this. And it's almost instant. Look at the, uh, <laughs> look at those eyes clear right back up. So that's the power of isopropyl alcohol. And I really like the 91% concentration. Uh, they make it 70 and 80. I like the 91. It's also really good uh, for kind of knocking apart paint if you have a little clog that you just can't seem to get out of your airbrush. So this is some of the handiest stuff to have around. The only thing is it does dry your skin out, so use gloves. I'm going to go run this under the, uh, the water in the faucet and come back. Wow, we've gotten a ton of junk off of this. Really happy with how it's coming out so far. This, uh, this may not look brand spanking new, but this bill is going to be beautiful when we clear coat it again. Got white loaded in the chamber, opaque. And because that there, there's a bunch of junk underneath of this, just the old pattern. We're probably going to do two layers of prime on this, I think. Probably makes sense to do that. One might. Actually, the one's looking pretty good. All right. Went over it a couple of times. That should do it. That looks completely covered. I can't see anything going through. We've got our primer on. And one coat did a pretty decent job. So I'm not going to do a second layer. And we're going to paint this. Uh, it's going to be a traditional for my area. And my home lakes are Bull Shoals and Norfolk. Um, the northern Missouri gin clear or traditionally clearer lakes. So I'm going to do a standard. This is something that you would have seen probably on a rock crawler or even some of the old older man patterns. I'm going to incorporate the man's fire tiger with some of the rock crawler type colors. So we're going to do a traditional fluorescent orange fading up into we find the colors here for you. A detail burnt sienna into my olive green color with a little bit of red accents on the nose and on the tip. And we're going to keep it as simple as possible just because the primary objective of this video was to show you how I will prep something like this for a repaint. So I think the color choices for the day are going to be a detailed carmine, which is a red. I was thinking about Tom Gore's Bloodline colors, the illustration colors. Ah, I don't know. It's a toss up. I like the blood red, but carmine's super close to that. This has got a little bit more brown tone in it, but we're going to have brown in the bait, so I think I'm going to stick with the, the red red. We're going to be using pretty much all. Wicked details today. We got a detail burnt sienna. Uh, this is not a true apple green. It's a wicked apple green that's been mixed with a little bit of brown and a little bit of moss green and a little gray to get that olive color. And if you guys want that formula, leave me a comment and I will explain the formula for my olive somewhere in a comment or a reply or on one of my Facebook pages. And then, let's see, we need that fluorescent orange for the belly. And I was thinking about doing a, a darker transparent sunset red, but I'm just going to go straight fluorescent on this, I think. We are locked and loaded, ready to rock and roll. I don't want to come too far up the sides because we have some other colors that we need to blend in. So that should be good. That's a nice bright fluorescent orange. That should do. I've brought it right to the underside of the man's logo. M79 might be a little bit higher on this side. Go ahead and even up that fade. When you do fades, angle your brush to point across the bait instead of right at the bait. You're going to find that your colors blend better if you do that. Just a little quick tip. 
even though the name burnt sienna sounds kind of dark it's not it's got a lot of orange tones in it so it's a much easier transition for a fade and come around the nose And it's not too dark of a color to where you won't see the craw stencil that we're going to be using. I think I'm going to use the stencil today. Dirt, I'm not going to freehand the craw, that's for sure. Don't need much. If ever there were a Bull Shoals pattern, this is probably going to be it. Green is done, and then while it's wet, I am going to take a cloth, just get the excess green out of here. Again, it was super thin, and you all know by now, most of the times I do not reduce my colors, but there were a couple of different kinds of paint to make this. It wasn't just Wicked Brand paints. I think I had some Spectratex, and oh lord, who knows. But now make sure this hasn't separated see it's been really hot and humid and that it's not so bad here in the in the shop in the studio but it has been outside and yesterday was a yard day so I wasn't in here at all I, I run my air conditioner constantly out here even when I'm not working uh, I shut it off at night but I didn't I didn't do anything out here and normally I'm pretty active in the paint so the stuff doesn't get separated I know I'm just making excuses I don't know why it was separated you guys no idea just was excuses excuses crevassi just on the tail end of this and on the nose I want to blend that red in bring that red all the way around the side on this and end up on the bottom I got a quick heat set on this all the colors are in place now it's still just a little bit tacky but I've I've gone ahead and cinched down just a little bit of netting this is a crawl so we don't need netting across the whole thing because it's not a fish pattern it's a crawl pattern but I've loaded just a couple of drops of gold in here and we're going to bring the pressure down. I just want to do just a little bit of accenting on just the top to offset that green to get it to flash a little more in the water. So gold and green generally go really well especially when you have reds and browns in your pattern. And that's it. That's pretty much all we want to do. But what I also want to do is heat set while that's on there. And then we're going to show you what it looks like. Just a real quick lay down of some flash. That's really going to make a difference when it's coming through the water. Especially if there's a little stain on the water. Which is true in the springtime. When these, spring and fall, is when I would fish this bait around my area in Bull Shoals. And I don't know what the camera is picking up on this, but got a nice clean net pattern. Can still see the green prominently, but now we've got that little pop of gold across the, across the top of it. In order to make the colors stand out more than the cross segments, I'm adding a detailed black magenta which is one of my favorite go-to colors for detailing and shading. It doesn't kill the bait like a black would in this situation. It's actually just going to accent it. So I'm going to keep the pattern simple. But this is a longer bait, so I am going to employ some more segments on the back end of this. I always put my top in first because it's easier to match sides once I've done the top. So I'm going to leave one large cross segment here, I think, and then do several smaller ones towards the back.
And this detail black magenta is plenty dark enough where black completely blots out the colors. So we really want that transition and not an overkill on our shading. So I've got the sides in and we're just going to match this up. We'll always start from the, on the segment portions. We're going to start from the front and work our way back. Just the opposite of what we just did on the front of it. But we just want some simple segments. And having this guideline on top really makes all the difference in the world as far as lining up your segments on the back. You want to occasionally blot that off just so you don't get any buildup. Even though we're spraying really light, I'm spraying around 10 is my PSI on this. Because the bait gets skinnier towards the back, we really don't need to put a whole lot of effort into these segments. It's just the tip of it. And there we have it. Just make sure that, that transition is clear, and it is. And I'm going to show you in better light. Yes, I'm still working on lighting here in the shop. That's okay, though. As long as the point gets across, and you guys seem to like the content of it, and Rascal seems to bark often. Yeah. You done, buddy? Or should I cut this? Okay, I think he's good. We can keep going. Unfortunately, sometimes he does dictate when I'm shooting and when I'm not. Luckily, the M-A-I-L has already been here today. Therefore, he shouldn't be too out of control. <laughs> now for the other side, we just flip this over. And line up our segments. And just like with any other crawl pattern, you always want to hit the edge of your stencil with your paint more than you're hitting the actual bait itself. That's always a helpful hint, and it always bears repeating simply because it makes sense. Because you want it to accent. You don't want a whole bunch of shading on your bait because it doesn't exist in nature. So you just want to define where your patterns are, where your segments are in this case. I do want just, where did that go? There it is. Always want to make sure you line it up. And then we'll flip it. Line up the segments on the belly. I do love these helping hands. They are lifesavers. Not to be confused with lightsabers. And just continue and get these as even as you can on the bottom because the segments on the belly of a crawl are fairly evenly spaced apart. The only standout accent that I really want to put on this once we're finished with the segments on the belly because we want those to, to match up to the underside it does help, it is helpful is a little bit of white speckling and I had considered doing some random splatter with the white speckle with a paintbrush but instead I'm going to use the actual paintbrush tip on an artist detail brush and just kind of randomly give it a couple of white dots per cross segment. When you match up the sides it really brings this bait to life. I don't know if you guys can see this but it's a huge change. It, it looks more structured, it looks much more lifelike and it only takes a couple extra seconds. You 
and you don't have to put a whole lot of thought into it or pressure behind it but that does make a lot of difference and now the only thing that's left to do is add just a little bit of splatter which is going to be planned splatter in the background and I need to find the brush that I've been using there it is it's a real thin one very small tip if you guys can see that very small tip I'm gonna pull this up off the helping hands because I just like to move around the bait while I'm doing that and for those of you with a keen eye you've probably noticed that I've built a second bait while we've been doing this I seldom do one thing at a time and these are going down to Texas anyways and I wanted to do a Rayburn red color on one of these wake baits because that's a, an extremely popular and great color great pattern so I'm in the process of building that the only thing that I need to do is spray in the the lines on it and I'll do I'll use copper on that but uh, everything that I've used including the fluorescent orange on the belly and the carmine and the uh, wicked detail black magenta is on this bait as well so it's, it's a good way to clean your chamber out and not waste any baits if you have something else that is going to tie into what you're making. Um, just a, another helpful tip, but it, it also uh, helps me in production when I'm teaching. I can do stuff off camera or, yeah, in this case it was off camera. So we're going to get down to the nitty gritty here and just put a few white dots on this. I'm not going to go crazy on it and I want to keep the dots relatively small and just kind of define the cross segments you will find white dots orange dots I've seen all different color bumps and dots on cross that's going to be a big blob we don't want that make sure that you're checking the tip of your paintbrush if this is how you decide to do your dots and try and use a little bit of finesse when you're tipping the paintbrush against your lure and there you have it there it is this is our pattern for the day wanted to spend the time showing you a bit more about how I prep a bait we're gonna super glue a small drop there's probably too much on the one side but the good thing about these is it's solid and I don't have to worry once I drop it in I don't have to worry about lining up a pupil all we do is drop it in let it get good and comfortable it's stuck now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. If you have eyes that are difficult and not plastic or 3D, <laughs> a small pair of tweezers is the way that I approach them. You just drop them right in. And you have about three or four seconds with, with most. You have a little bit longer with some super glue, but you've got a few seconds to set it exactly where you want it. Plus, with tweezers, you, less risk of getting it on your hands, although it's, I've gotten it on my hands before. It's no big deal. Pretty much ready to dip, but wait. How do you, what in the world should I? Oh, that's easy. Paper clips, folks, paper clips. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Take a paper clip, unfold the paper clip. This is a unique bait requires a little innovative thinking but that's how we're gonna hang it and take our needle nose bend that back like so it's gonna hang like that now we're ready to dip it now one thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna float up but that's why I've left plenty of underhang on the back end of this once we dip it 
because it's natural. It's a it's a floating bait. It's not a sinker. If you guys just watched the KBS video, you know what I'm doing. I'm checking for tears and punctures. That jar going onto the threads, the lid has a tendency to tear this, which is another way that you can get air exposed in there. So I'm just looking it over. I put it on yesterday. It should be okay, but you still want to look it over every single time that you're getting ready to clear coat. So we're just going to dip that in. Bringing it right back out. Putting on our drip wire. And realizing that I don't have any paper to catch it with, but that's okay. Just another excuse to change out my saran wrap. Oh, watch out, Casey. All right, don't move. Two hours later. We're a couple hours into this clear coat session here, and I just wanted you guys to take a look at how clean this bill came out. So we're going to end the video here. That's about as good as you can hope to get with a reclamation bait. So very cool, very happy with it. You guys take care. We'll see you on the next one. Peace out.